you are God. Ha. There's no one that can question your greatness because you are God all by yourself. No one can take your place. No one can do the things that you do. You do what you do best because you are God. You are God. You are God. Yeah. You are God. You are God. You are God all by yourself. And how I long to sing your praise. Oh, how I long to know your heart. Mm, yeah. How you care for me each day. Oh, and how you changed my life for real.
Jesus, yeah. We make her make a miracle. Promise, promise, keep in the, the darkness. darkness. My God, yeah. that is who you are. We make a miracle. Bye. 
we give you praise we give you praise thank you for who you are thank you for what you've done thank you for the journey so far thank you for your faithfulness thank you for everything that you do for us thank you for your mercies thank you for the blood that speaketh better things than that of Abel thank you for the hope that is within us thank you for our nation thank you for helping us contain uh, our extremes thank you for giving us a hope and a future thank you for not allowing us oh God to go the wrong way thank you for uh, even a semblance of hope we give you praise this morning we give you praise this morning we give you praise this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Le kato to sto pala man pravas na kita a lo papa papa sto pata na kita jo to sto pala ma papa te kiata na redo sto pala ma papa ta kiata nando koto no pata man dala kata je do sto pala ma papa pata na kiata veve to sto pala ma pa kata le ta to ba pa ba to sto pala ma we thank you, we thank you, Mapa Palama, in Pefanos to Pataman, the Canada, and Lato Stopada, Nakata, Satonoma, Mapo Papa, 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 You know the the easy part of the elections has been done with which is to go into the booth and do your votes the challenge now is moving from what you saw happen yesterday to the results being properly announced to reflect the will of the people amen, amen. but more important the will of God amen uh, so I just want us to take a few minutes and just pray. Uh, I'm not sure if it's confirmed yet, but I'm told somebody died yesterday, politician, shot in the face. Why? Why? At least as read, television said, 12 people died, which is more than people who died during the presidential election, which is sad. But then when you look at the numbers compared to the rubbish we used to do before, we seem to be making progress, but our ultimate is for nobody to die. Amen? Amen? Not even anybody to be harmed. Amen? That's our ultimate. So, I don't want us to pat ourselves on the back and say we've done a good job. We haven't. People still died. Amen? So, can we just spend a few minutes? Because when the results come out, who knows how people are going to respond? Uh, if people's mandates are stolen, there could be all sorts of things. Amen? But we want to pray, amen, that God who's brought us this far, amen, God who's brought us this far, God who brought us this far will never forsake us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Into your hands, oh God, we commit our nation. Into our hands, oh God, we commit these elections. Into your hands, we commit the announcements and the next generation of leaders. We say, oh God, without you, we can do nothing. And without you, we are nothing. We say, Father, this battle is not ours, but yours, oh God. We have no power against them. We can only vote. We can only take our place. We can only say our opinions. But you, oh God, we live, we ask you in the name of Jesus for the sanity of this nation, for the soul of this nation, for the hope of this nation, my papaya. We do not put our trust in man, but we put our trust in you. 
Vevetono Vatapa, Etataman Tolo Mapapa, Ekala Papa, Tosto Palaman Dekede, Zetos to Palama Papa Takiata, Avafre dos to Palama Prava Cotopai, Etala Pravas Totos to Panama Panaman Takia, Ala Cacotos to Pataman Satanaga. Oh, Zakita Mapa Pana Patono Palada. A vever vendet also patamangeta. Rede Satono Patavrakas de Canada. Zoto Stopana Mapa Panada. Zeto Stopana Masakiata. Let me quickly tell you a story about something that happened in Kenya many years ago. That's not this recent time, but 1960s, 19. Um, there was a prayer meeting uh, where the power of God just began to move and people began to pray spontaneously by the Spirit. And the man who was in charge of that meeting knew that God wanted to give a word of prophecy. And uh, so he climbed up on the podium and began to prophesy. I have the transcripts of the prophecy there. And that Kenya will not go in the way of some of the other countries and who had gone into war. And while he was prophesying, there was a young African uh, teacher who was there who saw in a vision horses, four horses, very similar to the four horsemen in the book of Revelation, heading towards Kenya on a map. And then he said, all of a sudden, a wind came from somewhere and began to blow those horsemen away from the nation of Kenya. I, I want us to believe God. Amen. This morning. Amen. Amen. For that outpouring of the Holy Spirit that rain of the holy spirit that will quench that will quench things that need to be quenched the wind of the holy spirit that will blow what needs to be blown away amen amen remember the bible talks about the wind of the holy ghost amen and then we talk about the rain of the holy ghost the bible says in ezekiel that you are a land not rained upon in the day of his indignation amen let's ask god for an outpouring of his spirit upon the hearts of men in this nation so that we can move forward there was something the president said the vice president said yesterday he said after this election i just believe i just hope that we can all just come together in spite of our political parties in spite of whatever and build a greater nation and that's the better thing it doesn't matter who wins it doesn't matter who comes into office as long as we are all heading in the same direction so I want us to just lift up our voices this morning and ask for an outpouring. The Bible says, ask you the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain and it will make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone, grass in the field. That means this rain can reach everybody. This rain will quench fires. This rain will refresh that which has been planted. The wind will blow away shaft. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Mam Prava Casta Panama, Embreves Toto no Palaba Papayeta, Ezekoto, Patama, Padama to Panana Kieta, La Provosto Patama Galeta, Zetos to Palama Papa Pana Patomanta, Oh God, Mapapa to Manta Franasta Kaeta, Ah, Zatos to Patama Papata Galeta. Zetos to pala satene keto no manaka. Zetos to pala papa satene. Vefetos to pala papa daya. Letos to paka stepanam pusomanta. Nandos to panais. May the ability to retaliate be removed. May the cause of evil and judgment be cast aside. May peace reign over our land in every local government, in every state, in every place, oh God. We say, oh God, the machinations, plans, strategies of the evil one to take us back. Let it be frustrated this morning in the name of Jesus. You, oh Lord, come and show yourself strong on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus name. For this God is our God. Forever. 
Jire, can you help me move the podium down? He will be. He will be. to six. I'm just going to read some highlights from there. Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. No one does good but God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if there is even one with real understanding. One who seeks God. But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good, not even one. Will those who do evil never learn? They eat up my people like bread. They would think of they wouldn't think of praying to God, but then terror will grip them. Terror like they have never known before. God will scatter the bones of your enemies you will not be put you will put them to shame for god has rejected them all oh, that salvation will come from mount zion to rescue israel and nigeria for when god restores his people jacob will shout with joy and israel will rejoice father thank you we're not afraid we're not afraid we're not afraid thank you we give you praise this morning thank you father in jesus name amen now um as you can see we have election attendance <laughs> praise the lord sometimes i don't know what people have i don't you know look i think sometimes I, after a while i've just realized that we're all just cut from different cloth amen uh, as to what we consider to be priority, as to what we consider to be important, 
And we can't force anybody to do anything. And it's not in my nature to even do that. So I'm going to... We're supposed to have an interactive service this morning where we can... Because Friday was supposed to be Women, International Women's Day. Uh, there's a video on International Women's Day. I, I gave it to them. It's about three, four minutes. Uh, but um, we'll do that in the network service. I've already told him to queue up two videos, first and foremost. First one I want us to watch is by a man called Michelle... Uh, Vishal Mangwaladi. Now, the reason why I want it, because in a way, he speaks about uh, the Proverbs 31 woman. And I know most women hate that scripture because of the expectation that we tend to give to the scripture. You know what I mean? That she's supposed to be the one doing everything, but that's not really the right interpretation of that scripture. Uh, and then there's another one by a lady called Kala Harris. Those of us who were here for the GLS Summit. Those of us who are here for the GLS Summit will remember she's a very powerful teacher. She spoke, spoke something about uh, people pos being properly positioned, having people mentors who will get you to where you're going. And I want us to discuss those two things. I was going to put a few ladies on the table, but if I put the ladies on the table, there'll be none of you left here uh, on this side. So we'll just discuss it together. Is that okay? Uh, so if somebody can please get this mic ready so that we just move it around. Now let's watch this first. And um, it's not about women, but it's about a woman. And I, I want you to see something from it. Let's hope you get something out of it. Five hundred years ago, my country India had more wealth than Europe. Then suddenly, some countries began to overtake us. What happened? It is tempting to credit the West's success to greed and guns, germs and steel. These did play a role. A responsible analysis, however, cannot overlook the impact of the Protestant Reformation. Economics has become such a complicated subject today that it is difficult for many to understand a simple secret of the West's progress. That secret was a woman, Mrs. Catherine Luther. Catherine von Bora was a runaway nun who married a monk, Martin Luther. She began the change that sociologist Max Weber discussed in his classic the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. The newly married nun and monk had no money to buy a house. Therefore, the local prince, the patron of Luther's university, gave them the empty monastery. But how was Katie to maintain a large house on a professor's meager salary? She turned her home into a paying guest house for university students. That required her to feed 30 to 40 people every day. How do you feed so many people? Katie started growing her own fruit and vegetables. Then she turned her home into an animal farm. The money she saved was invested in a second, third and fourth piece of land. One of them had a creek flowing through it. Katie turned that creek into a fish pond. By 1542, the Luthers owned more real estate in Wittenberg than any other citizen. As soon as she bought land, Katie began developing it. Farms needed buildings for agriculture as well as for housing her employees. So Katie became a builder. Back then, cities did not provide clean drinking water. Therefore, Katie ran a brewery one can still buy Luther beer in Wittenberg. Martin taught Bible's work ethic. Katie practiced it. Had Martin Luther followed the Buddha as his guru, he would have remained a religious ascetic, begging for his food. But Luther followed the Bible. It condemned laziness as sin. God's commandment, 
you shall not covet meant that people must create wealth. The eighth commandment, you shall not steal, meant that every person had a right to his property. While the state was responsible for protecting a citizen's property, the family and church were responsible for producing citizens that would not steal a neighbor's produce. I grew up in North India. The land and climate were perfect for all kinds of vegetable and fruit. This could have created a vibrant agro-industry. But the average peasant did not grow them because the upper caste men would come to his farm in broad daylight to help themselves to his produce. If he left his wife to protect his farm, she would be raped. Had Katie lived in the Soviet Union, she would have had no motivation to buy lands and develop them. Because atheism does not believe that you shall not steal is God's command. That gives the powerful the right to, to take over your land. Catherine Luther did much more than feed a few dozen students. Every day, Katie helped her husband disciple Germany's future spiritual and intellectual leaders. She transmitted to German pastors the Bible spirit of economic enterprise. The art of making money with whatever little you have. At dinner, the boys would often ask her husband questions and they would take notes. These discussions applied the Bible to everyday life, including to the economic life of ordinary families. These were published as Martin Luther's Table Talks. They enabled scholars such as Max Weber to understand how Luther's exposition of the Bible created Europe's spirit of capitalism and economic progress. about this I will do the committee thing on second network service I really don't have the energy now to start doing that but can we talk about this there are two aspects I want us to talk about first the overall concept which is not restricted to women if you understand what I mean it's talking about having a nation that allows for productivity you can see that right and protection of life and property and all that responsibility of the state and that's why she succeeded. I remember somebody said this. I think it was the vice presidential candidate for PDP who said, if Barack Obama had grown up in Nigeria, he'd probably be a bus driver today. I don't know if that's true, um, but, but I can understand the principle he was trying to get across, that the atmosphere you live in, you know what I mean, dictates how successful you become. But... I'll, I'll counter that maybe later, but not now. So can we start with the women angle? What do you think of, is this, what do you think of uh, what we just watched about Martin Luther's wife? Uh, and how does it relate, number one, to Proverbs 31? And more important, how does it relate to the woman of today? In the context in which we're living in Nigeria, right? I should have actually brought out the women because I would have forced them to answer. Now they're going to be dodging me. I need microphone. If you don't, okay, uh, Mrs. Badaki will start. Um, the, f the first question you asked is, um, how does it relate to women, t I'm sorry, how does it relate to women today? And, and what was the first one? What I don't even remember the first okay. one myself. So. Um, the Bible. The Bible, yeah. Okay. So I, I think if you look at the Bible and you look at Proverbs 31 and you look up all the things that she was doing, she was Proverbs 31. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh. Uh, I'm like almost Technical, I beg. We can't hear this mic. Pastor Sean, we can't hear this mic. Yeah. Okay. So she was, I would say that she was um, an example of Proverbs 31 because she was industrious. And that's one of the things that we see with 
um, Proverbs 31, the woman was very industrious. She had not just one business, but she had several, several. businesses. So she looked at it, she saw every time that there was an opportunity, she took advantage of that opportunity and turned it into an economic opportunity. So with, within anything, she saw there was a gap, she filled that gap. She saw that there was a need for money and she looked at what she had and how she could make money from that. And that was the first step that she did in turning a home with many bedrooms into a guest house. So I would say in terms of Proverbs 31, she's what we actually see today. So in terms of today, how does that work? We realize as women, 43% of households are led financially by women and not because there's an absence of a man. It's just that we see that more and more women are becoming bread earners or bread winners for their households. And with that, that's the same role that she had to play, that she played in her house, that she became the breadwinner. She became the person who was um, taking care of the home financially, which allowed her husband to do the things that he needed to do and to stay focused on the, um, so each one had their different roles. Um, and, it, and I think that's really critical now because we see even in universities, there's more women who are graduating with degrees. If we keep holding on to these traditional gender roles, it, w it would have made it very difficult for her to do what she needed to do if her husband didn't allow her to just do what she needed to oh, do. Thank you very much. That's good. Anybody else on this side? Anybody? Any lady? You, I hope you people are in church. Um, we are in the choir. Anybody else have a different view? Or, yeah, Emeka is here. That camera turns, doesn't it? Yeah, um, so good morning, them, church. Not me. I would say what I saw largely is we see the movement in the church, the Protestant movements, and we attribute it to Martin Luther. You know, but actually we do not see the partnership that happens. Yeah. Every time we see, we hear how that movement happened and how the Spirit of God moved on the church from the traditional understanding of what church was and the strongholds he had on the hearts of men. But we've been able to see the other side and now we can see the partnership because without her, he would have not be, he would have been frustrated. Yeah. Because without economic prosperity, what happens is that visions are aborted. And what we now see is that there was a partnership. So while she was creating a lot of income for the household, he could go around doing the spiritual things. What I also saw was that um, the distinction between the role of the state and the church. You know, um, what the church does is basically shape the hearts of men you know in a new direction when there's a movement when there's the time for um man to step into a new level you know like um this party says next level what the church was able to do you know was to shape the minds of men and in a time when it was not fashionable for women to stand up and speak for women to take authority to take leadership what she did was to be able to help that vision happen and for me the important lesson is it is not it's complementary rules and not a competition largely what culture does is that it says that look um if you are largely much more economically successful than i am that makes me a lesser human being yeah you know but not saying that oh you bring the economic force i bring the intellectual force into the game and what happens is that we become an unstoppable force that god uses i remember your message when you said that a marriage is a vehicle for god to do what he wants to, to do. do and i largely say that it's still very in our society when we sit down and hear the cases between men and women the men argue that, yes, she wasn't around. She wasn't sitting at home. Where was she jumping up and down? What kind of dreams and ambitions does she have? What happened to the children? And you're asking, <laughs> do the two of you have the children <laughs> together? together? Yeah. You know, everybody has a role to play. So what I, was, it, what I say is, for me, she was a stronger woman than I would even say than the women of now, so to speak. Because now it's even more fashionable. As at that time, she was the minority. Yeah. and being able to stand up and say this is the conviction in my heart how will I support this man in what he's doing and at the end of the day we have a very strong movement and it becomes a foundation for the capitalism that we see for you know democracies and all of that today thank you, anybody else on this side? I want to hear from a lady, be nice yes, okay, thank you um, I'm going to start from the very beginning with what she was giving she was giving the monastery um, we could see it as just a big building with nothing in it, but she was very bold because she saw the building and she was like, okay, this might be big but small because there's nothing in it, but then she made use of it, and if you look at the very end where she had all the land, she had 
all the property they had and all the things they could do with that. I think it just basically teaches us that you can start from what you're given. You might look at it and just say, okay, well, God, I have this. It looks like nothing, yeah. but usually when we look at what we have, what we've been given, what's in our hands, what we can use it for and use it for either, you know, family, the ministry, the glory of God, the country, everywhere. But I think for me, that just taught me that most of the time we're looking outside. Mm -hmm. We're not looking inside, inside at what we've been given and how we can use that little seed or big seed, however we look at it, and we can expand it and, you know, make a change, start a movement and help and being able to, you know, sustain people, sustain things and go from there. I think that's what I learned. Thank you very much. I want to throw two things out. Number one, this is 18 what? 1885 or 1855 or something? When you said the, the... So what we're... In other words, this concept of women playing a different role is actually a modern thing. Number one. It's not, a, it's not the foundation. It's not even the foundation of the Yoruba culture itself. So we, we've modernized it wrongly. Number two. What everybody spoke about. The synergy. I mean, we all know the famous one who put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight. Don't do you feel? Don't you feel that this synergy concept is totally? It's as if nobody even talks about it. So people don't even know that it's better for my wife and I to work together. You know what I mean? Rather than divide the family in terms of responsibility. What do you say to that? People must all be saints or happily married. <laughs> You're either all saints or happily married. We're trying to talk. We're trying to challenge what has happened to us. How did we get here? And how do we find our way back? Are, are you here? We're trying to find our way back because <laughs> your, your model of God, how many of you when you were growing up, your parents they did this to me and no disrespect to them they will say things like don't tell lies because god will punish you who remembers that come on but that was a lie you know what i mean and it created a stereotype in my head of the kind of person god is. that even at this age when i do something wrong and something bad happens to me i still attribute it to god punishing me am i right that's how powerful what was handed down to us shapes our lives and then we end up shaping our children in that light come on if your child gets up every morning and you say you're not supposed to walk you're supposed to look after the children and stay at home what do you think that boy is going to go back when he wants to get married what do you think he's looking for a stay at home wife right That's why we normally put a committee on the table because you guys are always playing shy. There is no right answer. There is no wrong. Emeka wants to say something. There is no right answer. There is no wrong answer. We are discussing. Amen? We are just discussing. We want to see how we can apply these truths to ourselves today. I hope it's changing the mind of women in church because I think a lot of women still think my husband is not providing for my house. He's not taking care of me. He's not giving me money. And that's your biggest handicap in moving forward. Because at the end of the day, when you finish, God is not going to ask you how good your husband was or is. He's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? There will be no, I mean, including your husband. What did you do with him? What did you do with the opportunities I gave you? What did you give you the ideas I gave you? What did you do with the children I gave you? What did you do with yourself? I'm not trying to justify the irresponsibility of men. That's why we don't have a men first yet. Because we have to figure that one out. You can't attract a thousand men to sit in an auditorium for three days without having a totally different agenda, you know, than you have for women. You should know that by now. I mean, the men will say, "What well, came fellowship for three days? for three days." Ah, uh, women, three days will tow. We don't have enough time. Three days is too short. We can't say everything we want to say. Come on, talk to me now. So you got to see it's a totally different dynamic. Are you here? And make us say something. You want to say something? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I just want to talk about the synergy because I'm very, um, I have this conversation with my wife. And one of the things I said, because sometimes I'm all for it, 
but sometimes I ask her a question. I see this um, extreme left view. You know, I follow American politics a lot. And what happens, for example, the Me Too movement? <clears throat> and one of the things I talk about is the fact that when God gives us an opportunity or an intelligence or something, it is not for us, it's for everybody. But what we have seen is that once a group of people have been oppressed for a very long time, that's happened with the black people yeah, in America. They, go to the other the women, side. they just jump, yeah. it's like an elastic. Yeah. They just jump from one side yeah, and go to the other, the yeah. other extreme side. Yeah. And now the people who now have maybe unconscious or subconscious bias, who, do, who really mean well but do not understand these things because of the way they've been socialized, what then happens is that they now say, ah, these women, it seems like things have just changed completely. <laughs> what is this thing about women's movement? So what then happens is that we cannot bring the other party into the conversation. You know, the Bible says, come, let us reason together. So what happens is that one group is very angry at the other group, and the other group now says, ah, what did I just say? You know, what's this thing? You know, like was this thing that went on social media about a man who told a woman to, I think, shut up in a, in a I think it was on a rice TV. I don't know if we saw that um, clip. You know, they were analyzing the elections, and the way he, he pushed the woman aside, and it then generated a lot of, you know, anger online, which I really, which is understood. But sometimes I think the other party too has to be um, a little more patient and, you know, be able to reach out to that party and explain and educate these people. I feel, for example, a lot of the women's conversations, men are not involved. Yeah, yeah. As liberal as I thought as I was, I had to learn new things when I got married, you know, to my <laughs> wife. I had to learn to take the plates and remove the food. If I was going to put the thing in the sink, I had to learn to do that because, you know, I had to learn it. Even I thought I was very, very liberal. You know, so some, some people have open hearts. However, what happens is that when the way the other party comes at them, then what happens is that everybody now takes the extreme. So you now have, some, I will use like the Republican and Democratic Party. You now have some people extreme on this side. You now have the other people who have gone extremely, maybe like a Thank Bernie you. Sanders. They just go to the other side completely. And then what then happens? But what happens to us as Christians is that we can then use that conversation on love, you know, to be able to bring everybody together so we can build a more prosperous society. I but I think largely the anger of the there. oppressed side pushes the other side as well. That is not to justify the other I, I, I wish I, I wish I had a solution for that because I, I think it's still even with the black people, it's still there till today. Uh, with slaves, it's still there. Uh, with women. And then you also see it even in the politicians who become governors and become senators. They want to steal all the money that their father and their grandfather and great-grandparents didn't steal. It's a human nature thing. And this is where I think the biblical part of being a Christian is supposed to be the, the mitigating factor here. Where you, you'll be able to sit down and say, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to... What Bible says we should forgive, right? To forgive somebody is not to... Um, it's not to punish them for mistakes that they've made. Am I making sense? So for me, that's the mitigating factor. But before we leave this topic, let me, I want to play Carla Harris for you because it, it, she, she raises a very interesting topic which on the surface, you get a little bit worried about. Like, is she really right? And then, then when you now look at the Bible, you find out that she's totally spot on. Let's, let's watch Carla Harris. ascend in any organization without a sponsor. It is the critical relationship in your career. There's not one evaluative process that I can think of, whether it's in academia, healthcare, financial services. He has to use somebody. Promotions don't come directly from God. I don't know where we get that impression that it does. We, it, it's a very bad thing Christians do, where they assume that if God is going to promote me, he's going to come from heaven, touch my boss on the head, and release the document. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a mindset. But let, let's go a little bit further. She says, whatever environment you find yourself, you need somebody to speak on your behalf. I particularly want to focus this on women this morning. Because again, relationships. I like what she said. Because when you say sexual, because I also want us to talk about sexual harassment and rape and all those things in the network service. But not now. But for now, let's talk about this issue of getting promoted. Even your products and services, whether you are a caterer or you are you're whatever, somebody has to whisper your name in the corridors of power. Now, can, 
can I can I say this to you? The Bible says that the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. The children of this world know how to use what we just and then they have they may not they won't use it righteously. They will use it through bribery, through corruption, through giving out gifts, giving on due favors. How many of you have watched Godfather? You know, he, he, he comes to the Godfather on his daughter's wedding day and says, uh, somebody did this to my daughter, kill him for me. And now one says, ah, but your daughter is still alive. It's not right. He says, okay, you know what? I'll do it for you. But maybe one day when I need your help, that day may never come. So unbelievers understand how this works. But we don't. Because we'll say promotion doesn't come from the south. It doesn't come from the west. It doesn't come from the east. It comes from the north. The sides of the north. God is going to promote me. But God needs somebody. And the best example I can find is Daniel. The Bible says somebody promoted Daniel. The king. But somebody has to whisper your name in the corridors of power. Do you agree? Are you here? I don't want to teach. I wanted you to talk with me now. Okay, please. And we have assets, assets and resources, and all we do is use them for the church. Mm. And we're not thinking about the people outside of the church. All our messages are for the people that are in the church. All our prayer points are for the people in the church. So we too, we get to the table and we're not whispering the names of the people who don't have a voice. We're not trying to represent people who don't have a voice. So we all need to make sure whatever fear of influence that we have, that we're not, we're, we're using it for someone else, not just for our own personal, our own personal gain. But in terms of women doing additional work. The challenge that women have in the workplace when we do work is that we find ourselves doing a lot of busy work. A and lot of, so a lot we of all, busy work. So okay. what we do is we try to help everybody else out on their projects, but that doesn't get us promoted. Mm. That just shows that, you know, it gets us to be a team player, but all we get is more administrative busy work, more uh, uh, errand work, you know, gopher kind of work. It doesn't allow us to really get ourselves to the place that we need to be because we're not doing strategic work. We're not doing work that adds to the bottom line. We're not doing work that allows companies to see us as leaders. It just kind of lets them know that we can take care and handle things and putting out fires, which women are very good at, is putting out fires. But even in putting those fires out, we're not the people that get the um, acknowledged for it. And so, therefore, we don't get the promotion. Okay, for but it. I, I can throw it right back at you and say, why? Because we're not sitting at that table. So, what happens is that kind of work is not very important. And so, we need to be able to say no to, uh, can you help us make 150 copies? No, I'm really sorry, I can't do that because now I'm going to be working on my own presentation to be in that meeting, or I'm going to be uh, talking to the right people who are going to be going into that meeting. So I'm going to be able to add value to what they're doing. So this way, when they sit at the table, they see me more than just a copy maker, but they see me as someone who can add value to the conversation. All right. That's good. This is Aluni. Um, basically, that word that you said that um, promotion comes from God has settled in in people's minds. Right to the extent that we don't even bother lifting our hands to help anybody. We just believe that if God wants to help you, he will bless you. For example, this last week, there's this World Bank project, 52 billion involved, and we're supposed to train people about uh, three northern states and also and to my amazement, when the student reported last week, all of them are Muslims. And this is a world bank. So I was like, are there no people there to 
give out the information that this project is available, come and register, come and take advantage. So everybody I'm training now, they're Muslims. And it's like, I believe people there will feel like, if God wants to help them, we have his way of, they are not sitting in their place. I'm not saying it's not good to try. I'm just saying, where are the believers? Whenever we have something that is general, you find out that we end up not doing anything. We just feel God should do it as if he's going to come from heaven. So I think that, I don't know where that thing, how it managed to enter our head, but we end up not helping one another. If somebody is in problem, we sit together, we greet, and that is all. And nobody comes to ask you, sorry, this is happening, I heard about this, what, and it has come to stay with us. I personally don't know what the solution is until I heard her now that we need to speak up. Anytime we are in a privileged position, we should take advantage. It's one thing to speak for someone, but those of us or people that are in the position to speak for people, let's begin to speak. Don't let's see people dying, losing things, and we don't bother. We think everything about churches praise God, hallelujah, but the real Christian should look out for each other. So politicians, if they, are, if they do this, fine, but she mentioned church, and I think we have a very great, we need to actually stand up and correct this thing in church also. It's good. It's good. Anybody else? We'll take one more and then we'll start rounding up. We're already beyond uh, our time. I, I think, um, like everybody had said, we have been stereotyped by our culture and it has stayed with us for a very long time. But with what we are doing in this church, and I hope that many, many, many other pastors and even in the larger society will learn to do that. The truth of the matter, like Pastor had rightly said, is that I myself had always believed that if God will help me, he will help me until some few months back maybe two years i began to take critical look at my life and i found out that at every point in time that i want to make a push in life whether go down or go up it has always been somebody maybe one maybe two but it has always been people maybe they don't even share my faith but it has always been with people and like kalahari said it all boils down to relationship and whether you are a man or a woman, a politician like me, or, or a teacher or anybody, the truth of the matter, like the woman rightly said, is no, if nobody knows you, if you don't get to be vulnerable with some people, nobody will be able to speak on your behalf. I have something that happened to me in the past week. I was with a colleague who was discussing my work, my publishing work, and it was, I was supposed to... Uh, we are, I'm working on a project and please help me with this. What do I do? Along the line, he just mentioned something, a World Bank project. And said, do you happen to know anybody that is involved in this kind of thing, has an NGO? Incidentally, the first name that came to my mind, I just mentioned it. I said, ah, this person, this person. And incidentally, he knew the person, but he, nobody to mention the person to him whether the person gets it or not i don't know but at least like that woman had said had mentioned it had pounded the table i got to ui that same day that person had called another person in you i said ah somebody spoke to you about this and this and this are you sure about the person i said why don't you talk to the person what i'm saying in essence is that one as christians whether we want to localize it or we want to take it to the world, as human beings now, we need to open up. I understand our culture. Myself, I've gotten my hands burnt in some few times that if you open up, but we have the spirit of God and that leads us to who to open up to. God help us. All right. Uh, I want to I wanna throw something out there. I think I did it at the network service last week, and, but I want to re-emphasize it this morning. But it's this notion that what we need 
to, to do whatever God has called us to do, especially as Christians, must come from the church or from the church community. And so when somebody wants to do a project, he actually goes to his church for a loan or he goes to members of the church to help him. And when, for whatever reason, they don't help him, he gets angry with that organization. But I found out that what we're looking for in church, the resources are not necessarily in church. They're out there in the world. World Bank, loans, you know what I mean? Greek loans and all that stuff. But I found out, like she said, this closed mindset, you know what I mean? Of not realizing that we have to compete out there, you know what I mean? With other human beings and qualify to get what we need is missing in the church. So, I mean, a young boy approached me a week ago and said, um, I want to do a project with you. It's going to take place in the garden hall. X number, I need some partners. I went to Wema Bank in Ibado, and they said, sorry, uh, we, don't do, we don't process projects from Ibado. Go to Lagos. And he says, I don't know anybody in Lagos, and he's not going. And so he calls me to tell me, and I said, are you mad? I said, my own staff cannot take a final decision on something without getting my approval. These people are simply telling you that they don't have the power to approve your project. Go to Lagos. What have you got to lose? He says, okay. He went to Lagos. He dropped it. He comes back. He goes to Glow. Glow gives him a form. And in that form is a trick where you write the project you want to write and so on. And they will now tell you, who is your contact in Glow? They put it there. Who is your contact in Glow? Name, rank, position, telephone number. And then you sign. So he says, says, I don't know anybody in Glow, so I'm not going to submit my I'm not going to submit my book. I said, they are checking to see if this is an internal thing. You, you don't even understand how the system works. Third case. This is an, um, a, a gentleman. He's play, he used to play keyboard for me when I was in Jesus Embassy. He relocated to England and playing for church and so on and so forth. Couldn't get gigs and was getting a little bit for So I said to him one day, have you joined the union? him under his wings who happened to be the producer for Michael Jackson in London said you know what this next production come and sit with me and that's how you get connection why do you think all your connections are going to be born again so we don't apply we don't apply for you win we don't apply for World Bank projects we don't apply for uh, anything at all we don't apply for Greek loans we don't apply for anything because we feel ours is special it is by special delivery an angel will bring it to your apartment and then you sign the paper on your bed and then after that you will sing thanking God for his it's like trying to get pregnant without sleeping with your wife Unless it's immaculate conception, of course. Which is not so immaculate. Amen? Let's, let's change. Amen? Let's change. That's, that's, that's I mean. Let's change. Let's learn. Two videos focused on, 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 on women. Simply showing you that the biggest challenge we're having is in our mindset. It's in adapting and believing a culture that was given to us. Dr. Degbala said to us, last two Sundays ago, three Sundays ago, and said, it's like a man, it's like half of the population of the world are men, half of the population of the world are women. And yet you say you don't need that half. You've just cut down your workforce. You've just cut down your resources by half. And the problem is, you will still be required to do the job. You know what I mean? You will still be required to carry out the assignment. We have to change our attitude. We have to learn, put ourselves in a position where we are like what I'm, that's why I'm going to play Kala Harris again in the network because it's very short. Number one, performance. Remember what Pastor Gandhi told us last year that there are many things we get away with in church. We come to church on Sunday. Pastor, I will get up and say to you, We're going to do women first next week. 
Then I come back three weeks later and I say, sorry, the Lord said I shouldn't do it. That's, you can get away with that in church. Because once I say the Lord, there's none of you here who will challenge me. Am I right? But if you announce something to the world and you say, I'm going to do this and you put out a notice and then you come back and a few days later and you say, you're not doing it, the world will say, you are a liar and you are a thief. So performance, we don't like that. You don't, Christians don't, that's why they want to eat. What do they say? Walk like a rat and eat like an elephant. And I always ask, where are you going to put it? Number two, what do you do for others? What do you do for others? What are you doing to call somebody else's name somewhere? Not something you're going to profit from, but something that they are going to profit from. Are you promoting other people's products and services? When somebody comes to me and says, I want to do this, whether I like it or not, my head goes to who in church is doing this thing? Who in church is doing this thing first? You know what I mean? And if I can't find anybody in church, I go to another level and say, okay, who else do I know outside that particular circle? Sometimes I'm not necessarily looking for Christians. I'm looking for people who can perform. I'm not really looking for Christians. If you're in church and you don't perform, I won't recommend you because I have my reputation to protect. You know what I mean? So we must change. Amen? Amen. Amen. No. Did your candidate not win? <laughs> Amen. Yes, you want to say something? Well, we'll close with that and then we, we can go. While she's about to talk, bring out your tithes and offering. Help us quickly because I've already taken too much time. Bring out your tithes and offering, please. When you mentioned did your candidate... We're going to play the video. One minute, yeah. It occurred to me that Christians have been praying ever since for Nigeria to change. And, it's and yet, they didn't go out to, to vote. vote because in their head, God will do what uh, I, I, I think it's a little more complicated than that. I tell you, I tell you what, what, I, what I think. Uh, I, the apathy comes from many things. You know what I mean? It's, 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 take, I, I think everybody misunderstood the election process. For instance, what happened during the presidency, you know what I mean, in the South, had a limited impact, you know what I mean, on the overall election in the sense that in the South, they were pretty balanced. You know what I mean? Maybe somebody won by 40,000, 50,000, or something like that. And then in the North, they won massively. So people in their mind are like, we voted. It didn't shift the election. You know what I mean? So why I'm doing it here? But they forget that this particular election is supposed to be, you know what I mean, between a locality and it's very vital that they vote. Number two, people were just tired of, you know what I mean? No, there's been very little business going on in Nigeria since January. Who knows what I'm talking about? The, you just want it to be over. Let's just move on. Because so much has been spent, so much has so much energy has been dissipated. And then number three, the frustrations of the first set of elections, you know, where you had to queue up. We were in the sun. As a matter of fact, we made arrangements. I mean, um, what's his name? Bola made arrangements for canopies to be put on our own polling booth with chairs so people can sit comfortably. The person who they located the polling booth in his compound drove them away, drove the, told them to carry their canopy away. That they're going to use it for violence. I'm sorry, oh, I think God is waiting for a generation to be wiped out in this country because I think somehow our thinking is so bad that it's going to take a new way of thinking, you know what I mean, to move our country forward. We are trying to make people comfortable and somebody comes and says they're going to use it for violence. Are they going to take canopies and start hitting each other with it? It's, it's a problem. So I think there are a lot of reasons why, there are a lot of factors that came into the apathy you saw yesterday but there was already apathy in lagos from the presidential when five million registered voters and only one million showed up to vote it was there i think it's not so much you'd be surprised that the one million could have been christians who voted you know what i mean but the point i'm trying to make is is a lot of factors we can't restrict it to that one issue about our christianity i want to play this video for you we have some new superstars that have been born in church we're so sorry we took your video the one we, we edited from um, the one we took during the women's first photographic session and we were been given an opportunity on AIT to show some adverts and some conversations so we managed to squeeze this out so bring out your tights and we're going to collect it and then we're going to close with that we're going to play it and then 
it's I didn't put my wife, it was the people who edited it. I had to beg her when I got home. She doesn't like publicity, but this has gone viral so far. Please, we want you to make it even more viral. My name is Ajuma Madiji. I'm Semi Podaki. I'm Bimbala Okutiyang. My name is Atinuke Sibi. My name is Toy Odukweson. I'm inviting all women in the city of Ibadan to Ibadan Women's Fest. The Women's Fest? Women's Fest. Women's Fest. Ibadan Women's Fest and Expo 2019. And we are going to be talking about everything from domestic violence to business to art to music to health. It's a platform where different women can come together and we can share ideas, you know, challenges and you know the best way to be able to profess sustainable solutions. If it affects women, then we're gonna be talking about it. And I would love for you to come out and be there. Come and have fun, come and network, come and meet amazing women who are doing amazing things. Come and meet me. As long as you call yourself a woman, you should be here. It's happening at the New Streams Conference Center, kilometer 110. This is the time for women to rise up and take their place in society. Well, and uh, let me thank Femi and Stephen. They did all this by themselves. So we appreciate our own in house production team. Amen. For doing that. We'll get it better. We're going to get better as we go along. I also want to thank uh, all the women that have been supporting us behind the scenes, financially, otherwise, logistically. I want to thank. Dr. Mrs. Smith for her, for encouraging me and the work that's going on. They've started, we're going to start uh, preparing for this program on Monday for the medical sector in the garden hall. Um, I expect everybody, please, if you're a woman in this church, we're counting on you to please support this program. Number two, there's something called women's groups. It's on the site. Go women's first, women's as in S, first dot com dot ng there is a woman's group we want you to please when asking you if you already have a group all we want you to do is put that group on that platform and if you also want to join the group simply join the group that's already on the but we need that place populated before friday so that other women can see it as an example um, we're starting on friday on time registration will start at nine the program itself will start at ten amen we need your help we're going to be asking for volunteers and help we are also appealing to our musicians to be here with us for those three days. And then, of course, the week after, we're going to do uh, e-commerce, um, e Southwest e-commerce um, summit and expo. I'm beginning to, you know, get uh, <laughs> worn out. <laughs> anyway, but please, we need your help. We also need your ideas. I'm not sure if there are any more stands left. I know we've been overwhelmed with... Um, uh, requests and so on and so forth and one of the biggest problems I have with Nigerians is last minute stuff. We started marketing this thing since January we worked extremely hard in December and put this thing out there some people only read it yesterday and they are calling me uh, can I have this and I'm like I beg you just I don't know what to say but that's I don't work like that but this is Nigeria and we shouldn't tolerate it. Amen? We should set standards. So we're going to keep to time, and we're going to do our best, but we need your help. Then that's to also warn you about next Sunday. Next Sunday, the Women's Fest will still be taking place here. However, let me put this very clear. We're going to have our real success seminar between 8 and 9, after which we will hand over to the women to run the service, which means offerings, whatever, will be done during that service. We don't want to start taking offerings from people, you know what I mean, who are visitors to our church, so that they don't think that we did it to start to collect money from them. So everything that has to do with TBN will be done. We encourage you to support. Nobody's, people are going to ask you to, we're going to ask you to donate. That, that, that doesn't mean we're not going to ask for that. If you want to make a donation or give an offering towards this project, they'll, they'll give you that opportunity. But I'm saying TBN, as far as official TBN service is concerned, it finishes at 9. So that the women's first will take place. The medical will go on 